Welcome to Center of Light on this hump night. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everybody. Yana by here. Have a very powerful presentation for you. I asked a couple of friends today, what is something you think as you look out and about into the world with your level of awareness that people are needing? asked a couple of three people and I came up with a mixture and it's perfect and I even invented a new word if you look at the title in this form somewhere instead of grief trust and change it was griefed <laughs> so tonight's presentation is soul searching griefed <laughs> grief trust change and it's a beautiful unfoldment like a flowering of not only um, the people who are having grief issues or trust issues, but just in everyone's life, everyone is carrying around unconscious grief. I feel pretty fine today, Keith. We have all a lot of work to do. When we do the work and the soul is complete, we no longer need a body. Not that these bodies are not fun. Trust me, I'm enjoying the hell out of mine. but we want that liberation. I'm gonna do a presentation titled Spiritual Liberation on Sale, 99 cents, was 2.99. <laughs> Welcome to Center of Light, all my dear friends. First order of business, always acknowledging the beautiful, sexy people that make me happy. Make, helps me to be happy. Mirrors my own happiness, there we go. Thomas, what's up, bro? John Berthelot. Holly Borland. Hi, Holly. Cheryl Nash Taylor. Tell mama said hi. Mama Connie. I love me some Mama Connie. Francisco, my brother. I love what you're doing, sir. John Berthelot. He gets to be uh, announced twice. Melanie Carr has been hiatus for a while. And I understand exactly what she is doing. I love it. The Vito's in the house. The V. John Powers. Dana Trotter. Thank you for sharing Dana. Kelly Curtis. Three. Kellen Renando, Elwood, Adana, Abe. Hi, Abe. Shirian, Cherian, Shirian, Cherian. I'm going to go spy on Abe. I'm going to go stalk him right now. Let me go see if we have Facebook friends. If we're not, I'm coming, bro. <laughs> Tonight, I am going to be do, doing two presentations. The one you're experiencing now. We are friends. Hello, bro. I'm glad we are uh, able to come together again, at least in this way for now. Let me look at a couple of your pictures. Damn, you're a sexy, handsome man. <laughs> I'm just funny, brother. Tonight, right now, we're doing soul searching, grief, trust, and change. The flowering. I don't know why that word is sticking with me, sticking with me right now. It's a flowering. It's truly taking the image of a flower opening and expanding. Hello, Darnell. <clears throat> Later tonight, I'm going to be doing a presentation title. I was, you know me and my splash banners. I use really cutesy titles, sort of like a unconscious clickbait. And the images are really cool. Um, so instead of... Tonight, I might be doing some readings. I'm going to ask people to pose a question. Make it the question, though. I want it to come from your soul searching. <laughs> How you like that little lineup? Hello, Shasha, Yusuf, Linda. So it's a picture of the genie coming out of a lamp. So instead of your wish is my command, it's my wish is your command. Basically, my wish for you is that you are able to command your life. Check out the banner. It's cool, or you'll see it when we do the show. For that show presentation, if you want to call in, I have calling lines now. It's called my phone. Contact me on Facebook inbox. Send me a video message. It has to be video. Video engages the speaker. If you don't want to be seen, just turn the phone away from you while you call me on video. And then you can be on the air with Yanava. Just an element of fun. Why not participate? But it does require you to have headphones. 
so that my voice don't come out of your phone, it go into your phone, out of the speaker, and it creates this endless feedback loop, and it's just impossible. You want to call in, it'll be fun. Linda says, hi, KB, Yanava. Unsun's in the house. Unsun and a dream I had last night, and someone else worked with me today about moving up for me. Something transpired with me last night in my dreams with three lions. Two were, one was in the distance, and I'm going, Phew. and then there's one right there, and I'm kind of sweating. And then after that one passed, I, Phew, again, and then right over the top of me, was a male full maned lion. Wow! Felt good. Didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> Woke up this morning, I knew it was powerfully, powerfully significant. So the presentation a little later is going to be My Wish is Your Command. I will be taking calls, I will be taking questions. Make it the question. Maybe this presentation, which I have no doubt, is going to bring you into a space that you have been longing and or needing, not necessarily willing, to go to that may generate a question with you that I can ask, that you can ask and I can offer some insight. Welcome to Center of Light. I want to make an announcement about... Everybody hearing everything okay? I'm learning new audio tricks. Send me an exclamation point. It only takes one person. As soon as you see someone else with that exclamation point, you don't have to send it. So thank you, everyone, for participating. How much I love you for that. <clears throat> I want to now share with everyone, and many people were waiting for me to do a presentation last night on Gone, where... Have our children gone? I wanted to do the presentation. I like being informative. This would be very, very powerful if I would have done it. I'm not quite so sure the power push would have been in the direction I would have liked it to be the end result. And because of my lack of clarity, the last thing I want to do is create a downward spiral or spin to reap some sort of karmic repercussion. Because where I was taking this presentation was so far into the rabbit hole, very few dare to venture. And with those few do, who do come out, and they become what's deemed or termed a whistleblower. I wasn't going to do this from a whistleblowing perspective. Maybe I was. Maybe that's why my intuition said, don't do it, Keith. A dear friend of mine connected to Swamji, first thing that welled up inside of her was, are you digging? What do you hope to achieve? And are you clear? And I said, absolutely not. Then I spoke to another dear friend of mine whose best friend found some of the subject content that I was going to talk about last night. I'll give you a little bit of it. And her best friend started digging and digging. Digging's okay. Talking about it publicly, blowing whistles on every freaking show and this and that will get you killed. I'm not afraid of my ministry. I'm not stupid. It was about, you can do the research yourself. It was about this drug. There is a medical compound structure. It is an actual drug. When certain molecules or arranged elements are arranged in a certain way. 
It's stronger than LSD or mescaline. Where do they get it? At least one place they get it. Consider what I said the topic was going to be about last night. It's called adrenochrome. A-D-R-E-N-O and then the word chrome. All one word. Adrenochrome. Do the research yourself. It'll break your heart. Don't go into that rabbit hole unless you're solid. Unless you're strong. <laughs> It will do a number on you, and you won't like it. So I guess the end result of that show, if I would have done it last night, was not imbued with light whatsoever. My intention was to bring about an awareness. That wouldn't have been enough. So do your research if you are interested. Tonight we are talking about Soul searching, grief, trust, change. When we get out of grief, we can begin to trust the process of life. When we begin to fully trust things naturally on their own change. Not because things actually change. Hear this. Things don't really change. The beautiful world is always there in the silence. When we trust, as we trust, we change, and simply the world appears. The veil not only gets pulled back, it just dissipates. Do you understand? You don't really change this. This is perfect. All of it. It's accepting that which is already perfect is the bitch. So we don't change the world out here, really. It's just that every time we change, the world's gradation upgrades. Let me look at something. So what we are looking at that may not be good as we trust, as we accept, allow, and appreciate, it simply takes a new form. You don't see it that way anymore, basically. So why did me speaking about the children affect me as it did, as it did a minute ago when I got emotional? And one of the words tonight we're talking about is grief. Where does that come from inside of me? It's called vulnerability. It's one of your most magical, powerful tools. Not that you were handed. One of the powerful tools that you are. You are vulnerability at your core essence. God is the nature of everything. So am I not seeing what I was going to talk about? Gone, the missing children and people being trafficked off of the planet to become slaves to work labor as well as sex slaves for other races. It gets darker. <sighs> Why does that affect me? I still have growing or letting going and trusting in my own life when it comes to people being hurt by evil. I do. Evil, I use in this context, and I don't use that word often, and I don't take it lightly. I don't use it as a judgment saying, that's evil. But I'm call, I am calling a spade a spade. This is an energy form, a dark force, that the word evil best describes the thought I'm trying to convey to anyone. That is my platform. <laughs> But I do see the world in a very beautiful way. I, I'm melting the veil. It's melting for me. It's getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And even though emotionally it moved me to talk, just to talk about not doing the presentation last night on children, 
I also understand it on some level. I don't understand that I understand it. Doesn't mean because something is happening that's bad that we need to sit back and go, well, aren't we supposed to accept, allow, and appreciate it? <laughs> no one can ever help you with that decision. No one. Maybe you're there because you're supposed to insert, involve yourself. Or maybe you need to stay out of it. That is where the trusting, the decision you make is the right one. I didn't trust my decision last night. I trust my decision not to. But that veil for me is thinning. When I look at war, it chaps my ass. But I also see the other side. I see through the fog bank. There's a purpose for it. Like the children. It's karmic. And in that, I find a river. Of okayness. Of accepting it, allowing it, and appreciating it for what it is and that river takes me to my soul and in there is where i connect to that understanding that i don't understand how i understand it because it's karmic nothing you can really do about it so what can we do about those children there's nothing you can really do about it but there is and only you can make that decision when to engage and when to sit back. But the best thing you can do about it, and we all can do about it, is do nothing and become aware as to what my intention was last night. But sometimes awareness is not enough. There has to be another component of you in the equation that can act as the moving or the embodiment of the awareness versus just being aware of the something. What we can do, regardless, is detach. Well, Keith, how can you engage if you detached? That third component is engaging from a detached point of view and vantage point. That is where you will have the most bang for your buck because now you are the the beacon of light that pushes you don't have to push with your hands you don't need a hammer you don't need to beat something into shape that doesn't fit trying to beat something into shape that doesn't fit that applies to other things beating on other things is insanity it, it's a, a dog chasing its tail Tonight we're talking about soul searching, grief, trust, and change. Unfolding like a flower. And as I still feel my throat being tight, you can see my lip quivering, the emotion I'm having, just reflecting again in this moment. What I do with that obviously has to do with some thing in my life about grief. Because though those atrocities that are happening in the world are horrible, some of them have died, some of them are dying, some of them are held captive, all kind of people, in every land, about everything, war, whatever. And some will die. There's a grief in that for me. So what I do instead of going, oh my God, this hurts, oh my God, this hurts, oh my God, this hurts. I find the spiritual prompting, opportunity, the desire to see it for what it is. And that is instead of, oh my God, this hurts, oh my God, this hurts. I say, oh my God, this hurts. Okay, I'm done with that. Now what are you really? And I fall into it. Then I say, what are you really? And then I fall into it. 
I fall into the place where there really is no answer. And every level you, quote, descend into the abyss of your egoic pain body self, you will begin to break out of it and move into the light body self when there is no answer. Because you will fall into the self that has no question. Without question, you will understand it. So when I get choked up, emotional in this way, if it's a joyful nature, I breathe and fall into it so I can expand it. I can expand myself into it, my true self into it. And when I feel emotional in this manner, I go inside and I expand myself into that feeling so I, with my ya, excuse me, my ya, my will, my God, my consciousness, the seat of who I am in consciousness, I can just see this raw energy, infinite potential. When you become a master at manipulating your feelings and getting out of judging them for what you think they are by the labels you were taught, you are truly moving into your masterhood as a spiritual being. Now, masterhood doesn't mean it's a black belt test and after five years of doing this, it can. Depends on your passion. It doesn't mean that you're in your mastership and you're going to graduate really soon. It means you are beginning to play with mastership energies. We speak in cosmic here. So it may not be in this life, but you are now beginning to fondle and monkey around with light energy at a master level because feeling is the closest thing to what you are without being able to without being aware of your light if you're not aware of your light the best thing that will help you to understand more closely what you really are is your level of feeling oh so you're saying when i feel good no that's not that's exactly what i'm not saying <laughs> When you understand that your feeling is not what you think it is, it's a feeling. It's not who you are. When you identify when, with the feeling, then it begins to hurt because you say, this is what I am when it is not what you are. So Keith, what am I to gauge this feeling too if it's not about feeling good well yeah i like feeling good it is about feeling good but don't get hung up on feeling good it's about feeling because between now and eternity there's going to be energies that move through your system in the form of feeling if you're an embodied being or however it works on other levels <clears throat> what are you gonna do with it the rest of your life the rest of your eternity which never is going is never going to end and it also goes backwards are you ever going to resolve this bundled up block? So what you do, good feeling, bad feeling, it's just acknowledge, it's just feeling. Versus, oh my God, this is me, I'm this feeling. That's where the grief and the self-induced suffering comes in. When you say, oh my God, it's just feeling. You may have broken your foot and it may be intense feeling. Don't equate it to suffering. And don't equate it to pain. Do your best. It changes it immediately. I had a kidney stone in 1998. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> kidney stone. And this is when I started to get my spiritual walk on pretty darn good. So I'll go into a bout. A, a bout, a kidney bout for hours. And I'm laying down in the bed and oh, I'm squirming and you can't get comfortable. And I decided to go into meditation. And I started breathing. <sighs> into the pain, into the grief. Kidney stones are blocked, crystallized emotions. No ability to flow. The urine does not flow through the urinary tract and out as waste. That which you're taking in and spinning it, spitting it back out as waste. It begins to crystallize the energy in you. And you sharp with that excruciating shard. So what you do, what I did, as I'm trying to stay still, I said, 
and the meditation, and I got energy moving, and I'm buzzing. This is not pain. This is not suffering. It's feeling. And some part of me that thought I was the pain and the suffering detached from it. I was no longer identifying this thing as me. And it buffered it as if I took the perfect amount of ibuprofen. It was so awesome. But in that same, that exact moment, I realized I was the one equating pain to suffering and suffering to death and death being the end. When I had that realization, pow! That kidney stone inside of me dissolved. Never had another attack. I even had a strainer to strain my urine. Never had anything. I'm going to take a short pause. We're going to get down to the thick of it when I return. Soul searching, grief, trust, change. If you know someone dealing with grief, depression because of grief, you know, someone has trust issues. I'm going to weave this all together, how they're all interconnected. And how each and every one of those, even the grief, even the trust issues, is a flowering. It's a beautiful, beautiful unfoldment of the song that is your life. Are you singing and humming along? Are you? Be right back. And we'll get down to it. For my girl, Melanie. Trust that I will guide you in whatever you do. Just remember to breathe and do your very best to live in love. Give in love. Be in love. And love you shall receive.
Welcome back to Center of Light. I love my light. Two dollars. Dollar tree. A dollar for the batteries. A dollar for the light. I love it. The energy behind the lens. <whistles> Hello. Welcome to Center of Light, everyone. We're speaking about soul searching, grief, trust, and change. Hello, Potsy. What's up, bro? Melanie, I always love your questions. They're thorough. They're deep. They stimulate thought. Melanie asked the question. I am not sure I am hearing you correctly. Yes, you heard me correctly. I love the way that you entered that. I, I love it. Are you saying that we should manipulate our emotions, feelings, rather than allow them to organically flow? <clears throat> emotions, energy, and motion is flow. It is flowing already. Feelings, however, seem to have a little different connotation. I feel this way rather than allow them to organically flow. Sort of, Melanie, because your emotions are going to organically flow anyway. It's what we are doing in the process, the clamping down and the bringing the pieces together and saying, I don't want this to ever change. Well, think about what we're doing. Grabbing this piece and this piece and this piece, and I'm truly manipulating this person that person this situation that situation the word manipulate has a bad connotation that is not what the word manipulate means for anyone the word manipulate means the ability to change the structure almost like alchemy to manipulate something so what the problem begins is when a person gets in there and manipulates their life in such a way that they're not allowing flow they like structure so they create this ball this thing and that thing sits here. And when things begin to move outside of those parameters, provided that everyone they assigned a role to starts moving around, they don't like it. They don't like it. And it creates emotional blocks. And it creates trust issues. And it creates needless suffering and guilt. So the idea, Melanie, is not to stop the flow. The flow, energy, and motion, emotion, is going to flow anyway. That's why it's called emotion, because it's going to naturally, organically flow. It's us in there trying to spin it and wield it into something unconsciously. Oh my God, this is this thing, and I don't want that. So it's still flowing unconsciously. It's not working in my favor. So actually, I'm... I'm truly manipulating the energy unconsciously to try to get it to work in my favor because I need things solid. Don't change on me, please. We are trying to manipulate that energy anyway that's naturally flowing. But when we see it correctly for what it is, then you can manipulate it, spin it. Well, think about it. When I play my guitar, it's just solid. It's just potential energy. I don't identify with the guitar. I identify with myself as the craftsman that can manipulate the guitar to create other emotion for people. If I play a happy song, love song, joyful song, sad song, kind of idea. I hope that works for you because we are manipulating the energy's natural flow with our insertions of what we think it is as to why I said instead of, oh my God, I'm in pain. Oh my God, I'm in suffering. Oh my God, this is just raw organic energy moving thank you for that that was fun for me i enjoyed that thank you brandon russ in the house brandon you have my permission sir to go grab your link to your page spirit tree and drop it in this form please do that sir everyone mr brandon russ he's doing what he came here to do hello leanne marcia Mary Carmen. Yusuf says, yes, transmute, don't feed the mind. Yeah, the mind is the, the monkey. He wants his banana. He wants his banana. Debbie Ann Trotter. Are you related to Dana? I doubt it, but I just had to ask. Girls like to shop. Sisters like to shop. Rena says, feeling is not your soul's truth. No. 
All right, let's get down to the presentation. Later tonight, I am going to be doing, it's supposed to be 9 o'clock. I'm just enjoying this presentation. Uh, a presentation on the magic genie. Instead of your wish is my command, my wish is your command. I will be taking phone calls. You need headphones, though. Don't, because we don't want an endless echo, endless loop. Um, make it the question, the one question. If you had one question, not that I am the qualified one to answer it. Maybe I can give you some insight and in seeing something a little differently. Tis all. Tis all. Not piss off, but tis all. Hello, everyone. Becky LaFave, Melissa McElroy. So my broham, Brandon must have left. Let me see who's here. I've acknowledged many. They know who they are. <clears throat> Let's get moving. Tonight's presentation is soul searching, grief, trust, change. Carmen Shasha today. Carmen, if you're here, give me an exclamation point, dear. Hello, Michael Anthony. I asked her for a show idea. And she said, soul searching. I loved it immediately. Soul search, this is what she says. Soul searching is something that people do most of their life and get nowhere. So, obviously, what most people are doing all of their life is not soul-searching as to why they go nowhere. Thank you, Carmen. I see your exclamation point. So, soul-searching is something that people do most of their life and get nowhere. So, true soul-searching is something that people don't do ever in their life as to why they don't get anywhere. So maybe everyone's understanding, or for those who are having no luck, success, is because they don't understand the term nor the idea of self-healing, self-inquiry, self-evaluation. See, now it takes it to another level, a whole new level. It's not that they're not getting anywhere. They're getting somewhere. They're getting to the same place. It's just a loop because... All thoughts really are is recycled data from the past. Hello, Robert. Hello, David. So they need to do something a little different in order to get out of the box. <clears throat> I also contacted my sister, Dr. Rita Louise, who is a pint house powerhouse of light she says Keith what I'm seeing is a lot of talk about change tonight we're talking about grief trust change she says I'm seeing a lot of talk about change about letting go of those things those kidney stones those things we manipulate in our feeling base hoping it never moves creating blocks that are bothering you and somehow holding you back to be open to what the universe provides, even if we don't know what it is or will be, a.k.a. trust. Hello, Pam Wood. <clears throat> Soul searching. Here's some questions I'm going to put on you. I want you to close your eyes. Trust me. Just close your eyes. Just close them. Don't just listen to the presentation. You're here to engage. So engage. Just close your eyes. Take three lovely, delicious breaths. And every breath, make it more juicy and more intentful. And then hold that space after the three breaths and go back to your normal breathing with your eyes closed. Ask yourself, what is soul searching? Don't judge it. It's a thought cloud. It shows up just like that. Just like that emotion, that energy in motion. Don't hang on to it. Let it flow. Manipulate it if you have to to make it what you want as a master creator. Point is, 
what is soul searching? Many ideas come, maybe one sticks out prominent. What is soul searching? You can open your eyes now. The question I pose, thought, emotion, as Melanie and I discussed, or whatever, what are you looking for? <laughs> What do you expect to find as you soul search? If you have been soul searching, have you found anything of quality yet? If not, why? Keep in mind, this came from someone that said most people throughout their life, soul search, and they don't find anything. These questions I have put are integral. If you have been soul searching, have you found anything of quality? If not, why? Now we go back to what are you expecting to find? <laughs> What is soul searching? Soul searching is an honest evaluation of your feelings and motives. That's why I didn't do that presentation last night. I was not clear on my motives. An example of soul searching is when you take the time to meditate and think about the purpose of your life and what is most important to you. Here, the surrendering of the soul to God is more important than soul searching itself. I am now going to play you a Sadhguru video. And someone today, thank you Dana, gave me some information on grief. So now we're going to move into the subtopics. The, the topic title tonight is soul searching. Now we're going to move into the grief aspect. And if you know someone who can handle the, this sticker on the wall, Sadhguru, on the subject of grief. Grief. I can't pretend, nor will I ever try to desecrate, trivialize your experience of losing anyone. Losing, very important, you hear that word in quotes, losing, especially a child. The law, the reality, the truth doesn't change for anyone. It's steadfast. That ensures eternity. Ah, uh, well, you've been coming here for two years. I'm going to let you in the front line. You don't have to pay. Go in the back. You're good. Doesn't work that way. Nobody gets any extra grace, at least in that way. What are you expecting to find when you soul search? Grief, what is it really? It's only until we understand what it is and what we are grieving about at our core essence that we can actually manipulate it. Does it mean that grieving for someone you love is a bad thing and not a central part of humanity. And in not grieving, we separate from the person we love and the humanity and that we have for them. It's not what it means at all. It means I void myself of the needless self-induced punishment about the things I said, things I did, things I shouldn't have said, things I shouldn't have done. Well, Keith, when my loved one passed, I wasn't thinking about any of that. I say the grief says otherwise. Sadhguru will explain it in a more delicious, powerful, insightful way. Sadhguru. God, I love this man.
if another life has enriched us in some way, we must cherish the memory, not grieve that memory. The most beautiful, the most tender and touching moments we must cherish, not just go on grieving that one incident called death happening. You valued him for the life that he was, not for the death that he is now, isn't it? Keep it that way. I'm glad you asked the question with a smile on your face. Very nice of you, wonderful <laughs> What happens beyond this body? That's a question. Your father went or my grandfather went, that's not the point. The point is, what is beyond this physical body? That's a question. It's when that question really torments you, when that question really finds its place within you, that is when you generally, genuinely become spiritual. Because spiritual means just this, to somehow get your experience of life to touch that dimension which is beyond your physical nature. Because your physical nature is accumulated reality. But beyond this there is something that seems to be life here. To touch that dimension, to make that into a living reality is the only goal. If you know the nature of your life right now, you will also know the nature of your life when you shed your body, isn't it? Now that this question has come, as time passes, don't let the question fade. Question should remain strong. You can keep the question strong only when you cherish your father's memory, not grieve. If you grieve, your defense mechanism will try to fade it. If you cherish his memory, you can wonder about this every day, day in and day out. You will have the energy and the penetration to do that. But if you're grieving, after some time you try to push the memory into the background and kill the question. Now the question has come, it's a blessing, you should not kill it. You must keep it alive, every day watered, fresh and on. It must bother you, the question, not the death, because death is coming for all of us. Some will go knowing, most will go ignorant. You should go knowing. Hmm? Wow. <laughs> this man wows me every time he utters anything. The physical reality is just an accumulation of your past experience. That is getting off of the wheel of time and the body and the soul and melting and dissolving into the divine ocean. That is doing a number on me right now getting out of the emotion, the motion of the current that takes everyone who grabs onto it. Grab onto it consciously, as Sadhguru said, versus unconsciously. Celebrate the life. It keeps their spirit alive in and around you versus the grief that wants to create this amazing rift, ren, distance. Right now we're on the segment of grief that can come in many stages, many different ways. Speaking of stages, I did not look at this information that someone sent me. I like to be organic, as Melanie said, in it. Stages of grief number one is denial. I feel fine. This can't be happening not to me. Denial. In fact, that denial is the impact. 
I've seen this firsthand myself recently. And I would say, and as far as to say, I would be the same person. I was with someone recently, and we were visiting someone else in a neighborhood. I was hanging out with Linda. <clears throat> and out of nowhere, from the inside of the house, I hear people screaming, screaming. And I thought it was some sound or whatever, and then we realized people were screaming. And we go outside only to find this family from across the street diagonally just found out their son was killed in a car crash. That first blow is denial. You've had it happen to you. People that have suddenly passed in such a way that, oh my God, this can't be happening to me. That's denial. It's natural. Until we elevate beyond the physical and we return to the spirit, then we see that they never left in the first place. But that is denial, nonetheless. They were slammed with this news automatically plunged them into the abyss because of the separation that they felt take place. Denial is usually only a temporary defense for the individual, stage one. This feeling is generally replaced with heightened awareness of possessions and individuals that will be left behind after death. Denial can be conscious or unconscious refusal to accept facts information or the reality of the situation denial is a defense mechanism and some people can become locked <laughs> in this stage kubler ross recommends that family members and health professionals not prolong denial by distorting the truth about the person's condition in doing so they prevent the dying person from adjusting to impending death and hinder necessary arrangements and so forth. Denial. Hello, John Talbert, Rob Boudreau. Good to see you, Rob. Glad you're back, sir. Denial. You found out someone really close to you just died. Spontaneously. In a moment. Stage two of grieving, anger. We understand anger. We know what anger is, right? I do. He used to be my best friend. He tries to visit once in a while, and I do my best to say, you're not welcome here. <laughs> I try my best, and I'm getting better at it. Anger, why me? It's not fair. How can this happen to me? Who is to blame? Once in the second stage, the individual recognizes that denial cannot continue. It's almost sort of an accepting. This is happening now, and why me, though? Once in this second stage, the individual recognizes that denial cannot continue. Because of anger, the person is very difficult to care for due to misplaced feelings. Misplaced manipulating the organic flow of feeling, the blissful current life stream, misplaced feelings of rage and envy. Anger can't manifest itself and can manifest itself in different ways. People can be angry with themselves or with others, and especially those who are closer to them. It is important to remain detached and non-judgmental when dealing with the person experiencing anger from grief. Stage three, bargaining. This can be also relate to the loss of a relationship or what anyone thinks that relationship is as we have assigned 
roles to everyone in our life. And when you don't play by the rule, the game of life that I set up, I'm pissed off at you. Or it could be death or anything, a loss of a job. Bargaining, stage three. I'll do anything for a few more years. I will give my life savings, so forth and so on, if the third stage involves the hope that the individual can somehow postpone or delay death. Death of a job, death of a relationship, death of loved ones, so forth. Usually the negotiation for an extended life is made with a higher power in exchange for the reformed life style. God, if you only do this for me, take it from my bank account. But the question I pose is why do people want to go back to the same thing that never worked in the first place as to why it's now in a different scenario? Don't we want to continue the expansion process as it flowers from what it was before to what it now can be? That's the question I pose. Psychology, the individual, psychologically, the individual is saying, I understand I will die, but if I could just do something to buy more time, people facing less serious trauma can bargain or seek to negotiate a compromise, so forth. For example, can we still be friends when facing a breakup? Bargaining rarely provides a sustainable solution, especially if it is a matter of life or death. Stage four, depression. I am so sad. Why bother with anything? I am going to die soon, so what's the point? I miss my loved one. Why go on? During the fourth stage, the grieving person begins to understand the certainty as of death, as Sadhguru said, it will find all of us. Because of this, the individual may become silent, refuse visitors, and spend much of the time crying and grieving. This process allows the dying person to disconnect from things of love and affection. It is not recommended to attempt to cheer up the, an individual who is in this stage. It is an important time for grieving that must be processed so forth and so on. And the final stage, the fifth stage is, it's going to be okay, I can fight it. I may as well prepare for it. In this last stage, individuals begin to come to terms with their morality. Death will surely find all of us, or that loved one, or other tragic events. This stage varies according to the person's situation, willingness, Ability, allowance, appreciating, understanding, all these little love nuggets. People dying can enter this stage a long time before the people they leave behind, who must pass through their own individual stages of dealing with grief. What I am receiving for me. Everything I am talking about tonight that is about grief doesn't lessen your sacred, beautiful experience about someone in death, in relationship, a job, something that is important to you that you lost. Denial, anger, <laughs> all these different levels. You can always choose to want up a level. You don't have to stay in self-induced suffering as long as you think you need to. I need to grieve and suffer a little more because I was responsible or whatever the dynamic may be for you. It will be there, that level. It ain't going anywhere. But you can go somewhere and you can go inward, which will help you to move up. Now we're going to go into our second segment for tonight. Soul searching, grief, trust, Change, trust, relationship, past experiences in relationship, help to peop, help for people to erect a wall of trust. I've had it. 
So I understand it. I've transcended the wall. I built a ladder high enough. Actually, I realized that it was an illusion. Through the silence, magically, the new world appears. Wow. So the trust is never about the other person. Well, Keith, you don't understand. Sure, I do understand. That's exactly why you're in a trusting issue again, because you don't understand. Trusting is not about the other person. It's about your level of awareness of when to engage with someone or a situation or not. Other than that, you will have trust issues that will launch you into grief experiences between now until you decide to change. It's not the other person that you trust or don't trust. You are trusting or not trusting your own level of recognizing a red flag or a white flag. It has nothing to be do with being a good person. I've learned to trust because I've learned to see. So now that I'm able to see that world that magically appeared in the silence, I don't have to trust. I can see. I know that there's dog shit right there versus I'm just not aware of it and I step in it and I soil my life and my life stinks. <laughs> I just have an awareness. Wow, the suddenly, magically, the new world appears. I just like to turn my perception to here. And something else begins to happen. And you won't ever soil your shoes ever again. Those red flags, when you change your perception of what happens, magically becomes white flag saying, you don't want any of this. Simply, you just see. Trust. How do you find it within yourself to jump out of a perfectly good airplane with a parachute? Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Once you get out that plane, you have no choice. And it, the self-realization of, I have no choice. I am in creator's hands or not. People who skydive will tell you of the exhilaration that happens when they jump out of the plane. Spiritualists will tell you the exhilaration that happens when they jump into a scenario or situation or life experience, potential or possibility or opportunity. Because it doesn't become about, am I going to land safe? As to why I need trust to make sure I do or do not jump out this plane or metaphorical plane. I'm jumping for the exhilaration that happens in the jumping itself. Scary shit in it. I will push you out the plane if you hang out with me. People will tell you. Because <laughs> I want that exhilaration for you. But I know how hard or hard, how hard not to push. Sometimes I'll take advantage when I see a little opening. I'll nudge you a little hard. It's my love for you. Trust. What is it you're mistrusting of? Is it all those unresolved moments in your life of grief? I don't trust the world anymore. I don't trust life anymore. I'm going against the very fabric of life, the very fabric of nature. I am nature at my essence. God is that which is natural of everything. So at my nature, I am free of grief. I'm blissful. I'm ecstatic. I am trusting because I can see that that's dog shit and that isn't. And I'm forever changing because I can see I can always move into opportunity, possibility, with these new eyes that allow me to see. Grief, mistrust issues come in many guises. If you're thinking about any of your grief 
or mistrust issues. You're not clear. Yes, it's beneficial to, to go through the dance of where am I not trusting and where am I still having some subconscious grief. But that inquiry alone does determine, because if a person knew they were grief-free and trusting, you never have to do the inquiry again because you already know. So the soul searching itself becomes an insane loop. The intention of the soul searching is the jumping out of the a plane where the exhilaration and the elevation really is. When you jump out of the plane, you actually elevate this metaphorical plane on a spiritual plane, another spiritual level, a spiritual plane. <laughs> That one thing you've been wanting to do that you're scared about, go do it. Well, you're not ready to jump. So maybe for that particular person, you, whoever you may be, do that inquiry, that self-internal question. But it's not necessary. You can ask the question and play the game, the soul-searching loop, the soul-searching loop. Until you get out of the soul-searching loop, you will see a circle sitting there forever spinning. Go, why was I in that? I was caught in, in the, the ongoing trap. It's in the jumping. That's the magic. And then you will get what you want. You will land on your feet versus worried about landing on your feet. Because that's where the trust issues come from. Past relationships. People we lost in death knocks us off our feet. And we don't like that place. No one does. Rightfully so, because everyone seeks balance. Whether we know we're seeking spiritual balance or not, everyone is seeking balance. Every being in the universe that is not fully illumined already is seeking balance, liberation, ecstasy, bliss, freedom. I just saw something at the corner of my eye in my house. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it was a light being. I, I, I don't ever play this game. I'm not playing. Somebody just said I. <laughs> I want to say hello and acknowledge my brother, Mr. Robert Harrison. Check this out. I want to show you something. I'm assuming you can hear me. He sent me in the mail this beautiful ball, crystal ball, faceted, multifaceted, and said, put it in your man cave. You can ask Robert as soon as I hung it up today with a piece of dental floss. <laughs> it started moving on its own for an hour. It just sat there and started moving. I said, what? In fact, I even sent him a video. Of it. it does move. And he said, talk to it. I said, I know I already did. That's why it started moving. <laughs> So tonight, tonight we're talking about soul searching, grief, trust, change. The trusting has nothing to do with, I don't trust that person. The trusting comes from not having the awareness to know who you are and what you allow yourself to be a part of. And you're not trusting always comes from a past platform that you have launched yourself from to make a present choice. Now we're moving into the final segment of trust, which is a video of Sadhguru. He said this, trust does not mean that others have to do things 
the way you expect them to do. Trust means to become vulnerable. Vulnerable. I am open. I'm going to make myself vulnerable and jump out of this airplane. Because once you cross the threshold of that door and that wind goes... <sighs> vulnerable. That's trust. So in vulnerability, there is a capacity to see. I'm vulnerable. I'm not attaching to this thing and manipulating it and trying to make it something I want it to be. But I can manipulate it into something I would like to experience when I make myself vulnerable, which allows me the opportunity to truly see, see things as they are in the light of awareness. Suddenly, the new world appears. I want to find something that, before I play the Sadhguru video, I'm going to find it on my wall while I play the Sadhguru video. He will speak about trust. There's sometimes we have these certain instincts in us that direct us to do certain things, popularly known as gut, gut. feelings. So do you, think, do you think the youth must act on these gut feelings or should be rejected? What is your take on gut feelings and instincts? There is something called as gut feeling and there is also something called as being shit scared, you know? <laughs> so when people don't know which way to go, some things move in their gut. Don't understand always uh, that as some kind of an intuition or some kind of an insight into life. Most people feel their guts only when you say he has guts means what? He guts didn't move. So fear is considered gut feeling by a whole lot of people, don't go by that. But there is a certain… in the yogic culture, today modern science is also recognizing this, in the yogic culture, we identify a certain dimension of intelligence in the stomach. A certain dimension of intelligence means, if we have to… this is what I am going to say is very simplistic. If you find loopholes, you ask question, otherwise I will pass, okay? <laughs> if you ask questions, I will cover those loopholes, but because I am saying it in such a brief manner, there will be loopholes. See, you eat a piece of bread. Within a few hours, it gets transformed into a human being, isn't it so? Is it a tremendous amount of intelligence? Hello? If I can take a piece of bread in my hand and make this into a human being, who do you think I am? Hello? Creator himself, isn't it? Must be God. If I can take a piece of bread and make it into a human being, this is it. This you are doing in your stomach. Obviously, there is a certain dimension of intelligence. It is not in the form of thought, but it's a different… Dim it's not intellect, but it's an intelligence. Is there a way to access that intelligence? Yes. Even if a drop of that intelligence enters your life, you will do things magically, not miserably. If you do things only with your logic, everything becomes quite miserable because you will have to go through logical steps for everything you will not know anything just by looking at it. So, it is important to develop that dimension of intelligence, but as I said, whenever there is confusion and fear, people will feel a pit in the stomach, that should not be understood as the gut, intelligence of the gut.
Hello, beautiful friends. Keith Anthony Blanchard here with an amazing product offer. We have been hearing about hemp oil for the last couple of years and its potential. Let me introduce you to my dear friend, Miss Jackie Atwell. Our oil helps bring your body back to a state of wellness. It is also used as a preventative from illness. It works by bringing the body back to homeostasis and balance. It's a natural, organic, non-GMO, full-spectrum oil. Third-party tested and comes with a certificate of analysis. Posted on our information page. Awesome anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. If you are suffering in silence, give it a try. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. 60-day empty bottle money-back guaranteed refund. To order, go to www.hempworks.com slash Jackie Atwell. That's www.hempworks.com slash Jackie Atwell. Welcome back to Center of Light, my dear, beautiful friends. Tonight's presentation is, was, coming to an end. Um, soul searching, grief, trust, and change. What are you grieving about? If you have to search for it, you're not there yet. So keep searching. And when you find it, don't allow the energy that is there to bring you further into the chasm. You just simply want to look at it. Just look at it. Until you recognize it's not who you are, that you are more of the individual that's looking at it. It'll move you out of any present grief, any grief that can come along, any grief from your past. It'll help you to trust the process of life. Life does not need your permission to move. It will move, like that energy in motion. Are you jumping consciously into the river? Are you grabbing onto every possible rock as the current's slamming you like a rap, like a, rock, a boulder in the stream, resisting the stream, resisting the current, trying to move upstream at that? When you begin to trust, you let go of the rocks. And merely, 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 you go from the drowning position to, oh my God, oh my God, fright, 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 I, don't, I can't trust. You turn over and float on your back, and yeehaw, you're going down the river. Now, there might be some other boulders downstream that you have to dodge, those red flags, the conscious awareness you have about yourself to say, there's a boulder in my life. I'm not going to hit it. I'm going to navigate, manipulate, meander around it using the faculties, the ya, the na, and the va. My God will to negotiate the mountain or the stream, my na, my mind, my reasoning, reasoning, understanding, power of choice, consciously, and my va to carry out how I have to wiggle my body to get the hell away from this situation or person or thing. Trust. Jump out of your spiritual airplane. Trust that the parachute will open. If it doesn't, it's okay. You won't feel it. <laughs> and in God's lap, you will be immediately so... <laughs> not trust and change be the change you wish to see in the world magically the new world simply appears it appears that news channel you watched yesterday that had you so involved and hunkered down into it simply becomes this nonsensical reality entertainment changes the whole game Everyone, thank you. I'm going to set up for my next presentation, which is doing readings. If you want to participate, I'm going to make the callers the first piece people I give my attention to. Have headphones. You have to have headphones. So it doesn't create a feedback loop. Put you on the air, but you have to video call me because it engages the speaker and I can put it by my microphone. You don't want to be seen? That's okay. Turn the camera away from you. Your being scared will do you no good. Life, removes, life moves regardless. Mm. 
Grief equals constantly clinging on, holding on. It's where your trust issues are. Let go of the grief, and the window opens. Peace, love, and light. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to see you here in just a little bit for the live readings. Live readings. Uh, these things can get a little cray-cray sometimes. People want their question answered. They want their question answered. I understand. I want to answer your question. If I can answer it, I can at least throw you a nugget or a bone. So I'll see you in about 30 to 45 minutes. I'm going to be back with my wish is your command instead of your wish is <laughs> my command. So I had a little echoing in my music. So I'm going to see you in about 30 to 45 minutes on my wall. For my wish is your command. I'll be taking questions, your concerns, but make it the question. Make it the one question that you just want to know about, right? See you in a little bit. Yeah.